Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Church Online with Cornerstone Assembly. Hey, my name is Zach Sloboda, and I'm the lead pastor here at Cornerstone. It's awesome to have you with us this morning. Thanks so much for joining us today for Church Online. Hey, our goal here at Cornerstone this morning is we want to help you to, to know God, to find freedom, to discover purpose so that you might walk into making a lasting difference in the world because we believe that God has created you with purpose, on purpose, to make a difference where you are. We want to help you see how God is active and moving in your life this morning. So what we want to do this morning before we move into the announcements and the word here today is we want to take a moment to pray before we move into worship because we believe that the undergirding foundation of everything that we do at Cornerstone is prayer. Prayer is the base level. It is the number one thing that we do here at Cornerstone. Without prayer, nothing matters. We can we can put together the amazing worship service all we want. We can have the most inspiring speakers. We can have the most creative team members, but without prayer, none of it matters. And so this morning, that's what we're going to start with here today is prayer as we enter into God's presence. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks to his disciples and the disciples come to him and they say, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray? Teach us how to pray. He says, okay guys, here's how I'm going to teach you to pray. And he says to them, when you pray, pray like this. And he gives them a pattern, he gives them a, a, a prayer pattern to, to follow. He says, pray like this, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I love that. I love that that's the way he starts the prayer. He says, here's what you need to understand is that we have a Father in heaven that we can come to. That he, he, he wants us to be in relationship with him. That he says, like, just like you're going to your dad. You know, like I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling my dad. In the same way, he's like, you can go to your father in that way in prayer. But he also says he's in heaven and his name is holy. And he needs to be revered and to be honored and to be respected. And it's with that, that dual uh, way of entering into God's presence that we, he, he invites us to come in prayer before God, to recognize that he is a father who loves us and desires to answer us and give good gifts to his kids, but that also he is, he is powerful and almighty and able to meet our needs. So this morning, here's what I want to do with us. We're just going to come into God's presence in prayer and in worship in that same attitude, the attitude of, of, of thankfulness that, yeah, I get to see my dad this morning. I get to talk to my dad in prayer, my father in heaven, but he is holy and he's almighty and he can meet my needs. So would you join me in prayer this morning, wherever you are with your family or your friends, would you bow your heads and open your hearts to the Lord here today? God, we just come before you right now. Our Father, thank you that we can come before you through your son, Jesus, whom you, who you gave to make a way for us to enter into your presence. Thank you. you. You bring us into right relationship with yourself through your son. And we can enter in, God, as, as kids adopted and chosen into your family. Our Father, thank you that you love us and you're eager to answer our prayers. And Father, we recognize that you are in heaven and you are holy and mighty and you are to be respected and honored and revered. And so God, we come with, with, with honor in our hearts, with, with reverence, God, in our worship to say, Father, you are good. You are mighty. You are able to meet our needs. Thank you, Father in heaven. You are holy and you are good. Today we approach you with all of our requests, with all of our needs, with all of our praise to give you glory. Jesus, we're here to meet with you today. We're going to meet with our Father in heaven through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Hey church, let's worship the Lord together. drink from, oh yes my soul, let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh yes my soul, for you are good, good, oh you are good, good.
Well, God, thank you for this time of worship we've been able to share together today. And thank you, God, that you you meet us wherever we are, that we can come into your presence with 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 reverence, God, with, with stillness, but God, that you accept us as your kids, that you you have chosen us and, and adopted us and, and brought us into your family, that we are loved and accepted, not because of anything that we've done, but because of everything that you've done by your spirit and by your son, Jesus. So thank you, God, that we are able to do this this morning. We just, we love you, Lord, and we give you praise. We thank you, Father, for who you are and what you've done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Well, church, thanks so much for joining us here today for Church Online. Again, it's great to have you with us again today as we are continuing our summer sermon series uh, through a people of purpose. This has been a fantastic time together. You know, this summer has been challenging for lots of us. You know, it's been helping us to recenter and refocus on on what God is actually saying to us as a people. And I love that he's been able to, to, to direct us in this way to help us to see what our purpose is as the people of God. But hey, before we get to the message this morning, I have a few exciting things I want to share with you. Just a few short announcements I want to give you this morning. The first thing I want to share with you here today is our Next Steps class. Hey, immediately after the service this morning, we are doing step number one, which is all about the DNA of our church. We want you to know God, to find freedom, to discover purpose, and to walk into making an everlasting difference in the world because we believe God has created you with purpose on purpose to make a difference where you are. But the problem is, sometimes we don't know the next step we need to take. You know, we know God has more for us, but we're not sure how to get there or where we need to go in order to walk into what he has in store. So we want to help you discover that. We want to help you take that next step. So this morning, if you would join me after the service online on Zoom, we're going to be posting a link in the comment section right now and in the description, you can find that there. So you can join us online for next steps number one, know God. And you will be able to understand the DNA of our church, what we are about as a people, what our mission, vision, and purpose is so that you can walk into joining us and make an internal difference in the world. Another thing I want to share with you this morning is you've already heard this a little bit over the last several weeks, but on August 23rd, mark the calendar, save the date, we are reopening as a church. That's right, on August 23rd, we are officially reopening our in-person services for in-person gatherings, and I hope that you will plan to join us for those days. But hey, we want you to know as well that if you are not yet comfortable with joining us for in-person services, that you know what, you're saying, I, I, I want to gather back, but I'm just not so sure yet. I, I, I might just stay at home for a little while longer. I want you to know we are making a way for you to still connect with us during this time. We are not going to stop offering church online. As a matter of fact, we've invested in a live streaming software so that you can tune into our church online services from the safety of your home as they're happening live on Sunday mornings. We're not going to stop offering our church at home groups. If you want to continue to gather with a group of other individuals for church at home, for discussion and for prayer, we're going to still continue to offer that so that wherever you might be at your comfort level, you can still grow in your walk with God because we believe God has more for your life. He has another step for you to take. He want to, and we want to help you discover what God's purpose is for you as you walk into that each and every day. So would you mark your calendars on August 23rd, save the date. We're going to be reopening for church on that day. But hey, as we are looking at reopening, I want you to know as well that we want you to be a part of what God is doing here at Cornerstone. We believe that this church is not run by pastors. It's not run by leaders. This church is run by everyday average people like you. This church could not run without the amazing team members that serve so faithfully on our dream teams every single week. You know, we are, I've been talking to a couple people that have been saying, you know, Zach, I, I've been feeling really disconnected in this season. I've been feeling really isolated. I've been feeling really cut off from, from my friends and from my, my neighbors. I haven't seen people the way I, I, I used to. And you know, if you've been feeling that, if you've been feeling that disconnect, if you've been feeling that isolation, I really want to encourage you. Would you consider joining a team to serve at Cornerstone as we reopen on August 23rd because those teams where we serve together it is more than just a team it's a family 
It's, it's, you, it's a place where someone doesn't just know your name, but they actually know your story. And you get to begin to rub shoulders with people and share life together and be encouraged together as you learn to make an eternal difference together in the church as we serve together. So this is an opportunity for us together as a church to, to connect with others as we make a meaningful difference in the lives of other people. So here's what I would love for you to do. We are posting a link in the description and you can sign up to serve on a team, to, to get involved on our dream teams here at Cornerstone. There's a whole variety of areas that you can get connected in, that you can connect with others in, and we wanna make those opportunities available for you. So if you wanna serve, would you click the link in the description and I'll take you to a form on our website that you can fill out so that we can know who is looking to get involved and how we can get you connected in an area where you can make a difference. Well, hey, as before we get to the word this morning, I want to give one last word of, of thanks to every single person that has been giving so faithfully to our church in this season. And you know what I've been loving to see is all the people that have begun giving online. I get a notification in my inbox every time somebody gives online, and it's been so cool to see. You know, before uh, before COVID happened, it was only on Sundays that we see giving coming in. But ever since then, we've, we've been promoting online giving. I've been seeing notifications on Mondays and on Wednesdays and on Thursdays, people beginning to, to give online in that way and people beginning to give uh, for recurrent monthly giving as well. Being consistent to say, you know what, I'm taking a next step to, to give of my tithe to the Lord. You see, the Bible talks about the tithe. What is the tithe? The tithe is our first fruits. It's the first 10% that we give to God as thanksgiving, as praise for everything that he's given to us. And the Bible talks about how God actually wants us to test him with our tithe. Yeah, God actually wants you to put him to the test in this way. This is a really strange section, but look at what uh, the author says in Malachi chapter 3. He says to me, bring a whole tithe into the storehouse. You know, not a partial tithe, not, you know, 5% or 6%. He says, no, bring your full whole tithe of your first fruit, the full 10%, that there may be food in my house. And then he says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I do not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing on your life, so much blessing on your home and on your family, that there will not be enough room to store it. The Bible says that when we give our first and best, we can trust God with the rest, that he actually is eager to bless us and that our giving unlocks the blessing for God to begin to pour into our life. He has already given so much to us and we get to give back just a small bit to him. And he says, test me in this and see if you will not have enough. See if you'll run up short because I promise you, you won't. God is faithful in this way. He always comes through for us. He will always meet our needs. Test me in this and see if I don't throw open the floodgates of heaven to bless you so abundantly in this way. So I want to thank every person that's continuing to give so faithfully to Cornerstone in this season. And hey, today I want to give you an opportunity to give once again. There are two ways that you can give to Cornerstone. Number one, you can give online. truerochurch.ca slash give. You can find the information to give on our website there. Or you can come into the church office throughout the week from 10 to 2, Monday to Friday, and you can give that way. Hey, this week, I'm going to be on vacation, though. So if you are planning by coming to the church office, I would invite you just to give us a call before you do so to make sure that there'll be somebody here to receive you. I'll be out of the office this week on vacation. Pastor Janetta is just coming off of her vacation, and she'll be coming back in, and she'll be in this week so we can arrange a time for you to come in and do that. Well, hey, we are going to turn to the Word of God this morning, and we are continuing our series today, A People of Purpose, because we believe God has created you with purpose, on purpose, to make a difference where you are. It's not by accident. It's not by happen chance. No, God has a purpose for your life, and we want to continue to talk about what that purpose is today. We believe that God has something in store for each and every one of us, a plan, a reason for us existing. So here's what I want to do this morning before we start off. What I want to invite you to do is grab a Bible and open it up wherever you are. And I'm actually going to give you just a few minutes, two minutes or so, to open it up and read this section of scripture that we're going to put up on the screen. And you can follow along with us as we begin to get into the word this morning. So it's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to 15. Whoever you're with, it might be your family, your friends, it might just be yourself. That's fine. Go ahead, open it up, read it out loud together, and we'll come back in just a few minutes.
Hey, what an inspiring section of scripture to us here today. You know, God has given people to the church. God has given apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. He's given them to the church to to equip them, to build them up, to build us up, to build you up so that we might grow into maturity, so that we might grow in love, so that we might grow as the people of God, as the body of Christ together. What an awesome section of scripture. And I believe God has something to say to you and to me this morning about our purpose as a people and what God's purpose for us is in the body. God's got a purpose for your life. It's not by accident, not by happen chance. He has something to say to you this morning. And I'm believing he's going to challenge us. He's going to encourage us. He's going to help us to see how his purpose is being worked out in the everyday moments of life. So would you pray with me this morning as we turn our hearts to the word of God to hear what he has to say to us. Let's pray today. God, I thank you so much that, Lord, you are already speaking through your word, you're speaking through scripture, and that you have something for us today. You have some encouragement for us. You have some challenge for us. God, you have some correction even for us. And God, I pray that as we turn our hearts to you, that you would lead us, guide us, direct us, speak by your Holy Spirit. Give us ears to hear what you're wanting to say, that we might know, God, how you might want to lead us into our purpose as a people of God. Thank you, God, that you've called us and chosen us. You've accepted us as your kids. Now lead us, Holy Father, into everything you have in store. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, you know, summer is coming to a very quick close. I know, I'm already dreading it myself, you know. I haven't even gotten my vacation yet. I'm going on vacation this week, and then I'm getting back. I'm like, oh, great, got to get right back to work again, you know. And, and for many of you, you're already going back to work. You've already taken your vacation. Uh, and some of you are already looking at going back to school. I was talking to one person this week that is going to be heading to uh, Alberta shortly to, to beginning school. They're going to be traveling there. And I know the break is almost over. You know, I'm sad about it too. And, and in our church community, many of us are going back to work. We have this, this, this diversity of professionals within our, our church. We've got nurses, we've got teachers, I've got mechanics, you know, there, there's tradesmen, government officials, business leaders. We, we've got full-time parents. We've got full-time grandparents. We've got students who are working hard to further themselves and their education. And these jobs are, are, are valuable, important, and meaningful. But you know what? Growing up, I was actually not taught that. And you know what? Many of you as well might actually relate to this with me. Growing up, I grew up in the church. I grew up, you know, in a, in a church that valued uh, the people that worked in it, but they did not value the jobs and the purposes that God had for people outside of church. Let me tell you what I mean. Whether intentional or not, I was taught growing up that there was kind of like a hierarchy of, of, of meaningful jobs that you could do in life. So let me give you an example. If you did, if you did full-time ministry, if you were a full-time church person, you're like, you know, that's the highest calling you could have in life. Like there's evangelists at the top, you know, Billy Graham, Francis Chan, these type of guys. Then you've got like, you know, missionaries who give their whole lives to, to pursuing Jesus. And then you've got like, you know, pastors and worship leaders and, and you know, and, and people dedicated their lives to church service. And then like way under the bottom, the, at the bottom rung was like normal people. You know, like, you know, tradesmen, teachers, business people, that sort of thing. And I was taught growing up that, you know, that their jobs were not as important as church jobs. And that God actually didn't care about those jobs the same way. Why? Because, of course, you know, pastors, missionaries, evangelists, they're building something eternal. They're building something that's going to last forever. Meanwhile, building a business, you know, caring for the sick, you know, teaching people, that doesn't matter the same way because, you know, that's, they're not building things of eternal worth. I was taught growing up that God only cares about church stuff, that God just wants you to just connect with the church, to just serve in the church, that he doesn't actually really care much about those, those other things, that, that those other jobs, they're just a mean to an end. They're just, you know, it's just I could pay my bills so that I can spend the rest of my time in church, you know, or I could just use that space for evangelism, but it doesn't nothing else, you know, or I could, I could earn money as a business leader and then all that money could be given to the church. That was the point of secular jobs. But like, man, even as I think about that now, even as I, like, in any sense of retrospect to think back on it and think, how silly is that? 
how, how, how wrong we were, how backwards that was. And the, but as I begin to think about this, I, I even begin to see today and realize that, that that mindset, maybe we don't teach that quite so strongly anymore, but that mindset, I think, still sticks with us in the church. It still sticks with us as a people in our, in our teaching and in our preaching. You know, pastors like me, we preach messages about purpose, about mission, about calling, because God knows you deeply. He created you specifically. He wired you uniquely for a purpose, to make a difference in the world. I believe that with all of my heart. All of that is true. But then we come to the punchline. Do you know the punchline? L let me tell you the punchline. The punchline at the end of a sermon. God's purpose for your life. He has amazing purpose for you. He has so much in store for you. And here's the punchline. You have a purpose and God's purpose for you is to serve once a week at church for an hour. That's your purpose. <laughs> it's like, that's the purpose of the church? It's to, to hand out bulletins once a week? It's to serve in kids ministry? Once a month is, is to, to serve on a team in the church. That's, that's the message we've communicated. And meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, God created me on purpose, with purpose to, to, to serve in a church building every week. I mean, no wonder our message is uncompelling to unchurched people. No wonder no one cares because like, what am I supposed to do with the rest of my week? Like, I spend 168 hours outside of the church and only one hour in the church every single week. What, what's, what's the point? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't care. If, if, if that's what following Jesus means, then I'm not interested. And listen, if that's the scope of our mission, if that's the extent of the way we view our purpose as a people, we are completely missing our mission. Because God has a purpose for your life that's so much greater than, than just serving coffee or handing out bulletins or putting together a church service and just doing ministry at church once a month. Listen, I believe those things are valuable. I do. I really believe we, we, we should serve in the local church. I believe it makes a difference that we, we can connect with other believers and serve and encourage and be inspired as we do so. But if that is the only place that we can make a difference, that's the only place that we can do ministry, then you will miss out on your greater purpose that God has for you in your life. What if God wants to use you to make a difference as a banker, as a, as a teacher, as a, as a nurse, as a parent? What if ministry doesn't stop when we leave the church on Sunday? What if instead God was inviting you to become a minister of the gospel everywhere you go? What if God has a purpose for your life greater than the one we've built for ourselves? I grew up believing some lies, some untrue statements about my purpose in life, but I don't want you to believe the same lies this morning about yourself because as long as we see ministry as something that only happens in a church building on Sundays, we will miss our purpose as a people to be ministers everywhere we go. So here's what I want to do this morning. Here's what I want to do. I want to show you three lies I believed growing up about ministry and about my purpose. And I want to counter those lies with biblical truth. And as we go through these lies this morning, I want you to consider for yourself, maybe you've actually fallen for these in your own life. Maybe you've believed these in some way for yourself. So let's take a look at the first one this morning. What are the lies I believed growing up? What are the lies we can fall for as a people of purpose? Well, lie number one is simply this, that the pastor is the minister. But let's see what the Bible has to say about this statement. Ephesians chapter 4, the section we started with this morning, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says this. He says that Jesus gave the apostles, Jesus gave the prophets, he gave the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers. He gave all of these people to the church to do what? To equip the saints. Who are the saints? Those are the normal people. That's you. That's me. That's everyday average people who are followers of Jesus. God gave these people to equip the saints for the work of what? The ministry. For the ministry. For building up the body of Christ. You see, the lie I grew up believing was that the pastor is the minister, that the pastor does the ministry, that the pastor is the one who is responsible for building up the body. But what does the Bible say? 
The Bible says that Jesus Christ gave all of these people to us in order to do what? In order to equip the saints, that is everyday average people like you and me, to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, to encourage one another, to inspire one another, to love and serve one another. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's every single one of our responsibilities. The pastor is not the minister. The truth is that every member is a minister. The truth is that every member is a minister. Uh, a couple months ago, I got called to do a funeral in town recently here. And as I was at this, this funeral, I pulled up and I didn't really know the family very well, but I was, I was invited to, to be in this place. And I, I pull up to the cemetery, you know, I'm in my suit, I'm looking, I'm looking good, and I get out. And, and some of the extended family is there that I haven't quite met yet. And so I go over to, to introduce myself to some of them and they say, oh, you're the minister. You're, you're the, the, the pastor, you're, you're the minister of this service. And I, I mean, I never use that title, you know, such a, such a fancy loaded title and say, yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm the minister. Uh, you know, I, I guess I, I'm here to save the day, you know, those types of things. No, I never, I never say that. I just say, hey, I'm, I'm Zach. Uh, I'm, I'm just here to serve. I'm just here to serve because that's exactly what ministry means. Service. Ministry is service. I mean, think about it. We have, we have ministries in our government, you know, like the, the Ministry of Agriculture, the, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of, of Economic Development. It, it's a government department headed by a, a, a minister of the province, a servant of the province. A, and their purpose is found in, in what? Service. Service. The pastor is not the minister. Every member is a minister. Every member serves. In the New International Version of this verse, Paul says this, that, that Christ gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to do what? To equip his people for works of service. That's ministry, service, so that the body of Christ might be built up and encouraged. God's given you a work to serve. Why? Because ministry is service. All of us are ministers because everyone has someone to serve. I used to work at a restaurant in Edmonton before I became a, a pastor, and, and I, was, I was literally a server. My job was literally to, to serve people food, but, but, but more than serving my customers, I knew I was there for a greater purpose because I knew my job there was not just to serve burgers to people. My job was to serve my manager. My job was to serve my coworkers. My job was to serve my team and to love them and to encourage them and to build them up in their life. And, and then think about where God has placed you and, and, and whom he's placed you with. In his divine wisdom, think about our church. God, God has strategically placed ministers of the gospel in every neighborhood, in every school, in every hospital, in every restaurant, all over Truro that there are little pockets, ministers, servants, every place we can think of in Truro. You might say, though, but Zach, that's, that's just not me. You're like, yeah, sure. You're talking about every member's a minister, but you, you, you got a mistake here, man. I'm, I'm not a minister. I don't have the same knowledge as you. You know, I don't have the same training as you, the same understanding as you do, Pastor Zach. Well, to that I say, look at the Bible again. Look at the Bible, what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. He says, listen, we know we're not qualified to do this. If you feel unqualified this morning, know you're in good company. Because Paul the Apostle himself says that we think we are not qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification, it comes from God. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. It's not in our skill, it's not in our schooling, it's not in our charisma or to be qualified in any of this. No, our every member is a minister by the grace of Jesus Christ. First lie, I grew up believing that the only the pastors did ministry when every member is a minister. But the second lie I grew up believing is that some jobs are more important than others. You know, I talk to people every day. You know, I talk to people and ask them, hey, what do you do for work? You know, what do, I do, what do you do? And they say, oh, I'm, I'm just a mechanic. You know, I, I'm just a student. I, I, I'm just a parent. And some of you just need to get the word just out of your vocabulary. 
Because as long as you see yourself as just a, a whatever, you will never see yourself the way that God sees you. How does God see you? God sees you as a vitally important part of his body and of the church. Paul talks about the body very often. He uses the body as an analogy to talk about the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is this famous section where he describes the body as the church. He says this in verse 14. He says, yes, listen, the body has many different parts. That is, the church has many different people within it, not just one part. And if the foot says, you know, I, I, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. You know, some of you say, you know, I'm not valuable because I'm not a pastor or I'm not valuable because I'm not a worship leader. I'm not valuable because I'm not like somebody else. But listen to me this morning. The lie that I grew up believing is that some tasks are more important than others. But the truth of the matter is that every member is a minister and every task is important. The part you play is important. You matter and what you do matters. And some of you right there are writing me off. You're rolling your eyes and saying, ah, oh, well, not me. Can't be me. You know, I, you know, he's not talking about me. You know, because I, if, if I'm a part of the body, I'm something pointless. Like, I'm like the pinky toe or something like that, you know? Like, I, I don't matter. No one would notice me if I'm not gone. Well, let me tell you, I stubbed my pinky toe this week. <laughs> and you don't realize how important that is until it's hurting. True? You don't realize how much you use it, how important it is until it's in pain and you actually can't use it. Or, or you get a, get a paper cut on your finger or something like that. And then you actually begin to realize how often you use that appendage. And the same is true for every single one of us. You matter and what you do matters. That every member is a minister and every task is important. And just like there's different parts of the body and every part serves a different purpose, God has placed each part uniquely, specifically in a place on purpose to make a difference where they are. Look at what Paul says in verse 18. He goes on, he says, listen, our bodies have many parts and God has put each part exactly where he wants it. The Bible says God placed you with purpose on purpose. It's not an accident. It's not a happen chance. It's not even good luck or good favor. He goes on in verse 22 and he says, In fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and least important, they are actually the most necessary. Why? Because God placed you with purpose on purpose to make a difference where you are. Every member is a minister. And every task is important. But I mean, let's just, just be real for a moment here. Can we be real for a second? Let's just be real for a second. We got to recognize that, that there are moments in life when we feel unimportant. True? There, there are moments in life when we, we feel like what we're doing doesn't matter. Like we've taken a wrong turn. Like, like we're stuck. We've been stuck for a long time. I mean, look at scripture though. I want you to know, look at scripture. Imagine, imagine being, being Joseph. Here, here's Joseph. He's a promise for his life. You're going to be this great king, this great ruler. Your brothers are going to bow to you. I have visions for you of, of amazing future for your life. And he finds himself in prison, forgotten about for years, doing nothing important. What was he feeling there? Or, or look at David. There's this promise of anointing on his life. David, you're going to be the king. You, you have this amazing purpose for your life. You, you have been chosen by God. He sees you to do something amazing. And then he finds himself hiding in a cave from Saul, who is seeking his very life. Imagine how he felt in those moments, being unimportant, passed over. What was he thinking? What was he feeling? Or maybe even look at Jesus himself. Jesus had a purpose for coming to this world, and yet he doesn't start his ministry until he's 30 years old. He spends 30 years growing up. He's in a carpenter's shop making tables and chairs. You know, he's thinking, what am, I, what am I doing in my life until he's revealed as the Messiah? I mean, think about how long he waited to walk into his purpose as the Son of God. You see, it's easy at times to feel like what we're doing isn't important. And like our lives aren't making a difference. But if that's you this morning, let me encourage you today. Let me speak some life to you today. That, listen, God has not forgotten about you. No, God sees you where you are. God knows you. And more than that, he actually has a purpose for you in that place. The Bible says that God has put each 
part exactly where he wants it. Why? Because God has something for you to do there that makes a difference in that place. You know, I've heard it said at different times that that if the church disappeared tomorrow, would anyone notice? Would anyone care? And what they mean by that always when they say is if the church building disappeared tomorrow and and the ministries stopped functioning, would, would anyone notice or care? But we know that the pastor is not the minister and the church is not the building. It's the people. The people make up the church. And every member is a minister and every task is important. So what if suddenly tomorrow you were not in your workplace? You are not in your home. You are not in your neighborhood, your school. Is your absence noticeable? Do people care? Because listen, you were created to be a person of purpose. God placed you there on purpose to be a minister of the gospel in that place. That makes a vital impact where you are. I wonder, I wonder if if the reason why so many of us feel frustrated disappointed, discouraged with our jobs, our families, our marriages, is because we have yet to discover our purpose within that place. We're always looking elsewhere thinking, maybe my purpose is over there, but God's saying, no, I've put you here on purpose to make a difference in this place. And until you start to to do this, until you start to walk into that, until you start to seek it and to find it with your heart, you will always feel frustrated and confused and disappointed with your job, with your family, with your school. Why? Because you will know that you were created for more than just punching the nine to five clock. No, you have been placed there with purpose on purpose to make a difference where you are. Somebody say, my work matters. My work matters. Why? Because God put you there. God cares about you. He cares about your work because he cares about you. Listen, I used to believe that only the pastors did the ministry, but every member is a minister. I used to believe that that some tasks were more important than others, but every task is important. And thirdly, I used to believe the lie that I had nothing to give. See, all throughout elementary, junior high school, you know, I really struggled making friends as a young person. You know, I'm growing up and I'm struggling to find where I fit in. And that begins to make an impact on people's lives. You know, I wasn't sporty. You know, I I, I like to read a lot. I didn't really fit in and gel much with other kids. It wasn't until grade nine, as I was moving to high school, that God began to show me my my unique wiring and abilities. You know, he began to show that I, I loved writing. I was really good at it. I began to show that I, I actually really loved drama and acting and, and being in front of other people. That I had a passion for, for music, for, for building, for, for teaching and encouraging others. And I began to discover this truth that not everyone's good at everything, but everyone's a 10 at something. Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 4. He says that God has given who? Each of you. God has given each of you. That means every single one of us. A gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. He says, use them to serve one another well. God has given every single one of us the ability to make a difference. And then Paul lists just a few examples. He says, listen, do you have the gift of speaking, for example? Then speak as if though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Then then do it with all the strength and the energy that God supplies. It says elsewhere in scripture that no matter what your hands find you do, do it with all of your heart. Why? Because then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Listen, you might think you have nothing to give, but the reality is you do. You just might not have found it yet. When you find your fit, when, when, when you find that, that place, you step into the role that God's prepared for you, just watch as you begin to thrive and feel fulfilled in that place as you find your fit. Listen, not everyone's good at everything, but everyone's a 10 at something. For instance, I, I have enough self-awareness to, to know that I don't, I don't have much mercy, much compassion. You know, I'm kind of, I know it can be a little rough around the edges sometimes. I love people. I genuinely love people. I really do. But it's just, it's not my zone. But man, you get, you get Cheryl within that zone. You get Terry within that zone. You get Lewis within that zone serving on the care team and they shine like a solid 10. Why? Because every member is a minister. Every task is important. Not everyone's good at everything, but everyone's a 10 at something. So what is it for you? What is the place 
you know, God has put you to make a difference in? What part do you play in the place where he's put you? Listen, I want to help you find your fit. I want to help you to discover your purpose. That's, that's why we've been doing this series. And that's why we've created Next Steps. Because we believe that God has more for your life. You've probably heard me talking about Next Steps now for a couple weeks. You know, the last several weeks and you've thought nothing of it. Because you know, I mean, that's for someone else. It's not for me. You know, it's, it's for someone new, but, but, but not for me. But listen, our God is a God of more. Our God is a God of more freedom, more, more purpose, more passion, more life. And I want to help you discover how he's designed you so you can walk into that life of more, a life of more purpose, a life of more meaning, a life of more impact wherever God takes you and places you every day. Because as long as we see ministry as something that only happens in the church building once a week on Sundays, we will miss out on everything God has for us as a people of purpose. Every member is a minister. Every task is important. Not everyone's good at everything, but everyone's a 10 at something. Your work matters to God because you matter to God. It's not just a means to an end. It's not, it's not just like a way to pay the bills so you can spend the rest of your life doing church stuff, doing, you know, the only thing that really matters. No, God has placed you with purpose on purpose exactly where you are so that you might actually make a difference in that place. You know, here's the problem. We, we, we spend most of our time working in places that we've been told don't matter to God, the so-called secular world, all the while struggling to find, you know, leftover time for the only things that really matter, you know, church thing. But here's the thing. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that God is actually super interested in those areas and avenues of life. More than that, he has a purpose for you in your workplace, in your school, in your home, in your neighborhood. Every member is a minister. Every task is important. Everyone's a 10 at something. For some of you today, you're realizing that God's purpose for you is in your workplace. It's, it's, it's in your apartment. It's, it's in your building. It's in your school. That it's not just a means to an end, but no, God has actually placed you there on purpose to make a difference in that place. You realize you've been looking for your purpose someplace else, but the reality is it's right in front of your nose. It's exactly where he's put you. That he wants you to make an impact and a difference in that place, that your work matters to God because you matter to God. He's created you uniquely. He's designed you on purpose. He's wired you to do something that makes a difference in the world. So what's your next step today? What's the step that God is asking you to do? Well, for some of us, it's, it's asking God, Lord, how do you want me to make a difference where you've placed me? In, in my workplace, in my neighborhood, in my school, my, my family, what, whatever it might be for you. It might be, you know, serving your boss. It might be loving your coworkers. It might be being an example to others. The Bible says that a city on a hill cannot be hidden, that a light cannot be put under a lampstand, under a basket. It's put on the hill to shine. It's put on the stand to shine. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're designed to stand out. You cannot blend in where God's placed you. You're designed to be a difference maker in that place. So what is God calling you to do? How has he asked you to be a difference maker in that place? Maybe it's one of us today just need to stop and ask the Lord, God, what have you called me to do here? What's my purpose in this place? Because you're realizing today for the first time, he has a purpose for you there. And then we come to the punchline, the punchline of the message today. Remember what I told you the punchline was? I told you at the beginning. And listen, I still believe it's true. If we believe that ministry only happens in the church on Sundays, then we're missing our purpose as a people. But I still believe the local church is the training ground, is the place where we can begin to develop and grow in our gifts and our abilities. I believe that God has a place for each of us to serve in his local church. You know, to serve on the dream team at Cornerstone to make a difference in someone else's life at the church, to, to connect with others, to, to serve on a team, to build up and to contribute to what God is doing in our local congregation. I believe every one of us is called to serve. And so I wanna challenge and encourage you. If you've not been serving on a team, if you've never served on a team at Cornerstone, I believe now is the time. 
Now is the season to step forward and say, yeah, you know what? I'm actually called to be a difference maker. I'm called to not just to, to just take, but to contribute. I'm not just a consumer. I'm a contributor to what God is doing in our congregation. I'm not just going to consume, but I'm going to contribute. I'm going to be a difference maker here. I believe God's placed me with purpose, on purpose, not just in my town, not just in my neighborhood. I believe he calls you to make a difference there, but also in this church. He's placed you on purpose in this congregation. It could have been any church, but you're here. He's placed you here to be a difference maker here. So we're going to walk into that purpose today. Are you going to step into what God has for you today? Are you going to serve on a team and make a difference in somebody else's life here at Cornerstone? Here's what I want to do for you this morning. I want to pray for you today. I want to encourage you today to take a step today, to be a difference maker where God has placed you. And I know he's got a purpose for you in your workplace and in your school. He's going to help you discover that this week and to walk into being the difference maker this week. But I also know God has a place for you in his church. He has a place for you to serve. So I want to challenge you and encourage you today. Would you take a step? Would you take a step forward to, to get on a team, to, to, to serve and to get connected and to contribute and making a difference here in this place? We're posting a link in the description right now so that you can serve on a team. You can click on that and sign up right after the service to put your name down, to, to follow on a team, to serve on a team. I would love to get you connected someplace that you won't be in isolation anymore, but you'd have some others on a team to encourage you and to build you up in that place. But this morning, let me pray for you first, that you would understand how God has given you purpose in their place. Father, today, I pray for your church. Lord, I pray for your people. Lord, people that feel like their lives have been meaningless and purposeless, that it's just been punching the nine to five clock. Lord, I helped, I'm asking today that you help them to see that their job is so much more than that, that you have a purpose for them in that place, that God, you've actually placed them on purpose in that place to make a difference there. And Lord, I'm praying that you'd help them to see that they are a minister of the gospel, that God, every task they do is important and that they are a 10 at something in that space and in that place. Help us to understand, God, what it is you're calling us to do as a people of purpose who serve both in your church and as your church everywhere we go. God, we give our hearts to you today. We give our lives to you today. And we ask today in the name of Jesus, that you inspire and encourage everyone to walk into their purpose today by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God the Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, I hope you've been encouraged today. Church, I hope you've been built up today. I hope you've been able to see how God is actually using you and wanting to make a difference in and through your life today. God has something for you to do to make a difference where you are. And hey, like I said, I would love for you to serve on the dream team here at Cornerstone. We would love to have you get connected and help you get connected to that place. You can click the link below in the comments or in the description to sign up and join a team so that you can begin making a difference here at Cornerstone. I also want to encourage you though, that in your workplaces and whatever you are, God has something for you in that place. Paul ends his uh, letter to the Colossians in Colossians chapter three like this. He says these words to them. Verse 23, he says, listen, whatever you do, whatever you do, whether you're flipping burgers, whether you're teaching kids, whether you're helping the sick, whether you're caring for your family, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as if you were working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know something that other people don't, what do you know? You know something that other people don't. You know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. You see, when we're making a difference, we're not just serving people, we're serving Jesus. That when we go to our workplaces, when we're serving others, when we're called to make a difference, we're actually serving God as ministers of the gospel everywhere we go. Listen, you are a person of purpose, and God has a purpose for you in your workplace, in your family, wherever you might go. Be encouraged this morning and know God is with you. God is for you. It's not an accident. It's not a happen chance. God is working in and through your life. Hey, I'm praying for you this week. I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon. Next week, we got a special guest speaker coming to share the word with us. Pastor Nathan Hill from Evangel Yarmouth down in South Shore. He's going to be coming to share the word of God with us. You won't want to miss it. You're going to want to be here for it as he comes to share what's on his heart to encourage and challenge the church. So be blessed this week. I'll see you very soon.